Thank you for tuning in to TalkWad.com, the world's fastest growing internet radio network. Please check out all the other great shows on www.talkwad.com. Welcome to Think Up Unlimited Possibilities. This show is designed to uplift you as well as explore the cohesive nature of the universe in order to discover the unlimited possibilities available through converging and expanding consciousness. And here's your host, Patricia V. Scott. Hello, this is Patricia, and this is our third show, only the third show. It's only the beginning, the beginning of a new year, 2013, a lucky year for me. I'm really excited about that because most of my life I've been saying 13 is my lucky number. And uh, I think thinking back, I know when that started, when I was uh, in high school, I remember my mother was very superstitious and she used to let us stay home from school on the 13th, Friday 13th. And I thought, well, that's really cool. Wow. So it's always been my lucky number, and here we are in 2013, so I'm going to make the most of it, manifest some happy, positive thoughts. And just as a reminder, this is the TalkWad Network. We, uh, if you would like to call in live during this recording, during this uh, radio show, it is 727-493-2055, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. I can talk forever about this topic because, uh, well, that's one reason I got this radio show, so I could just talk and talk and talk. People who know me know that I never run out of excitement and things to talk about when it comes to the world of the unconscious mind or subconscious mind. So today I'm going to take off on what I tapped into last week. We talked a little bit about placebo. We got a little bit into the placebo effect. And this week I decided to uh, delve into some of some things that have to do with one of my first teachers in this field. Uh, and again, I'm in my 21st year of officially being uh, certified in hypnosis. I'm certified in NLP and a lot of other things, but uh, officially as, as a career. And yet I've been studying it most of my life. And 21 years ago out in California, Southern California, when I started at the American Board of Hypnotherapy, there was a gentleman who was on the board of directors there and was one of the teachers that I decided to go to his seminar. The first time I saw his name, I saw and I read his bio, and it said he was a professor of cellular biology at Stanford University. And I thought, what on earth is this guy doing at a hypnosis conference? And it turns out from the scientific world, he had tapped into the ability of the mind to affect cells, and in his estimation, even the very DNA. And he... After that time, I saw him many years in a row, and he talked about the things that a few years later, he ended up writing a book about it, because everyone, including myself, kept saying, write a book, you got to get this out there. And so the book that he wrote is called The Biology of Belief, and that's what some of the things I'll be talking about today are from that very book, The Biology of Belief. And uh, again, he impacted me quite a bit. When I, when I heard his seminar, he was talking a lot about uh, things that were a bit over my head, physics and cellular biology, obviously. But overall, the overall concepts made sense to me. And again, for many years, I had been tapping into that unconscious power and had already seen the effects, the produced many uh, amazing and what some people would call miraculous manifestations and physical changes and things like that throughout my life before I even came to it as a profession. And hearing him just kind of uh, allowed me to see from a scientific standpoint what actually is happening at the cellular level. Not that I needed that, but since I work a lot now with medical uh, hypnosis, I get a lot of referrals from doctors and I work with doctors and chiropractors and psychologists and that kind of thing. They, they kind of tend to want some of the more, more science-based data. So... Um, I'm going to talk a little more, like I said, about the placebo effect. If you call in, I'll just stop where I am and we'll talk a little bit because I love that. And um, placebo, uh, let me see. Let me do a little bit on the definition. I found this interesting because the definition of the placebo is to please. it, It comes from a word that means to please. How about that? So, um, let's see. A medicine given more to please than to benefit the patient. That's uh, the medical sense of the first recording in 1785 of of the placebo 
and back to that idea of to please, I shall please. And these days it's more uh, thought of from the uh, pharmaceutical industry uh, as far as giving someone a placebo, uh, inert matter in order to uh, have a, a test to compare it to a real drug. And many times the inert matter in some cases does as well. Even I've seen <laughs> some studies where the people did better on the placebo. And obviously if the mind is doing it, there are no side effects. And uh, the brain has all these great chemicals. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that during the process of this, of this show. And I mentioned uh, previously that there are many purposes I want this, this show to serve, one of which is I'm a certified uh, master trainer of hypnosis, and I am approved for continuing education for hypnotists. And if anyone needs a continuing education credit, they can actually watch our, uh, you know, this show or one of the archived shows, uh, certain ones that are approved that you can get continuing education credit for listening and then writing a, a paper on. The last one that we did was more on the misconceptions of what the word hypnosis means, what it, what it means in modern day uh, terminology, and kind of dispelling some of the myths that have been out there uh, through the years. Although I, I find that rarely anymore. Most people have had an experience with hypnosis, uh, many, many people now out in public when I'm at Chamber of Commerce events and networking events and things will come up to me and say, you know, I, I quit smoking years ago with hypnosis. Sometimes they're saying back in the 50s, you know, I mean, it's been around for a long time and, and more and more I'm finding people don't really have much of a aversion to it uh, as, as I was warned about when I started even. People would say, well, be careful because people are afraid of this. And I think that's more on the part of the person presenting it. And I always approach this as a, as a very serious uh, life mission, so to speak. It's, it's kind of my my desire to always explore the what I call the unlimited mind. And I was doing that way before I ever knew I was going to be doing this as a profession. And uh, as I mentioned, and will come up from time to time, I was in show business for 20 years. I was a singer. I was an actress. I did uh, songwriting and uh, just about everything you can imagine in that world for, for tw as in my 20-year career. And during that time, I was exploring things that I had even before then done as a teenager, a couple of health issues that I seemed to be able to talk myself out of, <laughs> one of which was quite impressive because it was, a, it was a back injury that I was not supposed to be able to recover from. And uh, in the years after that, I became really interested in what on earth am I doing that seems to be going against what the doctors are telling me. And I didn't know any better. I just had some kind of a strange little voice in my head, a little gut instinct or whatever words you have for that that kept saying this is what you need to do and as long as I found out as long as I listened to that it seemed to always be right even if everyone else around me was saying it was impossible so how about that I'm going to read a little article of uh, parts of an article that I wrote and uh, the other thing that I decided to do with this show is uh, I'm going to be bringing in, like I said, different people. I've invited some of my previous uh, clients to come in, ones that are happy to talk about the successes and the, the work they've been doing, the, way, the ways that they've been using hypnosis, NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. And, and these are just words, again. I, I'm, I don't get caught up in the labels, and I may do a whole show later about getting past the labels because that's what I do when I work with medical issues. Those people have got so many labels stuck in them, on them, the, stamped on them, I guess that it, it gets really challenging uh, and the expectations uh, that go along with each label and the, and the fears and all that kind of thing, that that's part of the challenge. And with this work, the thing I love about it is uh, stripping away all of the labels. So I use the word hypno hypnosis and hypnotherapist because that's where my experiences led me to study this work. And yet I don't really care what you call these things. In the very beginning and through the centuries, these techniques have been used successfully with different names, so I'm not really stuck on, on using the name, and yet that is uh, what currently my certification is in. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of all of the ways that, that hypnosis has figured out how to utilize what has been learned through the centuries on how to use the mind, and that's all it is. It's the science of the mind. Uh, one of my first teachers also was Dr. Michael Preston. He wrote a book called Hypnosis, Medicine of the Mind, and he just died a couple of years ago. I, I just am, feel so lucky and blessed to have had him as one of my first teachers as well. 
and studied with him out in Arizona uh, quite often during my first few years in this business. And he used to say, we teach people how to think. And then someone might say, well, I already know how to think. Well, yes, but is your thinking assisting you toward the goals that you have and being as happy as you can be, as successful as you can be, um, as healthy as you can be? And the question is, if you can use your thoughts, your thinking, your ability to think in ways that are more efficient towards all of those goals, then why would you not want to? So here's, here's a little paper that I wrote, and uh, this is one of the things uh, I said every show I'm going to offer something free for the listeners. And this is an article that if you email me, uh, either through my website, uphypnosis.com, or you can email me info at uphypnosis.com or uphypnosis uh, at yahoo.com. Any of those will find me. And I will send you uh, this, this little write-up because one way that we learn is through repetition. And part of the ways that we use hypnosis is by repeating things in different ways. Getting it into the unconscious mind repetitively is one way to learn things. And all learning does occur at the unconscious level. So I'm going to read this little paper that I wrote a while back. It's called Placebo Quackery or, Real, or, or True Healing. Sorry, Placebo Quack, Quackery or True Healing. And uh, I was inspired to write this after reading uh, some posted comments of an artic- on, on an article about how medical uh, schools are embracing alternative and complementary methods. One comment from someone who said he worked at Yale for two years, <laughs> that was what he wrote in his comments about himself, he sta- uh, stated that U.S. medical schools have, and here's his quote, sunk to administering quack treatment. And his comments reflected uh, the tunnel vision that I encounter from time to time in my practice when someone has adopted a limited belief system. It takes very minimal investigation to discover the enormous benefits being experienced by people who are incorporating a more holistic approach to health and healing. For over 20 years, healthcare uh, professionals have been referring their patients to me as a way to incorporate mind-body techniques into their treatment protocol. I help these people to get out of the medical disease and symptom mindset and into a positive health and healing mindset. These people are regularly um, having uh, dramatic, immediate, and long-lasting positive results. And these results are duplicated by my students and by colleagues all around the world. So is it simply a placebo effect? Well, what would that mean? It means the mind has accepted a belief and the body has acted on that belief. If someone believes that every spring they're going to have allergy attacks and that they must take medicine to suppress the symptoms or else they will be miserable, then that is their experience. I have worked with people who have had experience for many years, that experience for many years, who changed the experience after only one or two sessions. Is that placebo or is that quackery? Through all human history, mankind has been attempting to figure out how to achieve and maintain perfect health. I believe all of the answers are available and accessible from within each of us. As long as I hold that belief, my clients seem to be able to discover all they need to get unstuck, to remove energy blocks or whatever else you want to call it, and to achieve more peace and better health. For those who need the scientific research to back this up, I have volumes that I use in my classes, and it's easily found on the internet and in medical reference libraries on mind-body sciences, physics, psychology, cellular biology, and countless other areas of study. And some final thoughts. If you begin your research from a frame of what is possible and from a results-oriented approach, you will most certainly find, as I have, that we are designed very efficiently to move toward health. Sometimes we just have to get out of the way. So that's just a little one-page paper that I will be happy to send you in a PDF if you'd like to have that to review or to, to read again or whatever. I love giving things away. So again, I decided that each show I'm going to give something away. And if you're listening to this show on the archives, uh, I will still, if you email me at uphypnosis 
at yahoo.com or info at uphypnosis.com. I will still send you uh, whatever that particular show told you was going to be free. And again, if you'd like to call in, uh, the number is 727-493-2055. I'll be happy to talk with you. And this is Think Up Unlimited Possibilities. You're listening to Talk Wad Network. And Think Up is under the, there are a lot of different categories. If you go to uh, talkwad.com, T-A-L-K-W-A-D.com. And there are a lot of categories. Uh, this show, Think Up, is under the empowerment category. And I encourage you to go and, and watch some of the other shows that are archived. There are a lot of really interesting things. I haven't had time to listen or watch all of them yet. And yet I've found quite a few things there that are interesting, unusual, and pretty cool in every area you can imagine. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about Bruce Lipton here. Let me find what I have brought by him. Let's see. Okay. How the mind affects the body. Uh, here's, here's a little quote from, from The Biology of Belief, this book that I talked about a little while ago. The Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton, Ph.D., our new understanding of the universe's mechanics shows us how the physical body can be affected by the immaterial mind. Thoughts, the mind's energy, directly influence how the physical brain controls the body's physiology. Thought, energy, can activate or inhibit the cell's function, producing proteins via the mechanics of constructive and destructive interference. And then Martin Rossman, MD, in Fighting Cancer from Within. Here's a quote relevant to what we're talking about from, from that book, Fighting Cancer from Within. Imagery has been shown in numerous research studies to affect almost all major physiological control systems of the body, including breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, metabolic rates, digestive functions, sexual functions, and perhaps most important, immune system response. A review of articles investigating whether imagery could affect immune response revealed that the vast majority of 22 such uh, studies showed significant positive results. They demonstrated that people doing imagery aimed at stimulating the immune response against cancer or chronic viral infections increased not only the number of circulating killer cells, the immune cells that are specifically uh, charged with eliminating cancer, cancer cells, but it increased their aggressiveness and encountering, uh, when encountering any abnormal cells or virus. The level to which immune responsiveness is increased with imagery is significant when the system is stimulated by imagery. There are no adverse side effects. Any side effects actually tend to be positive. A greater sense of, of calmness, empowerment, and feelings of wholeness. I'm going to take off on that thought because one of the things that I, I tell my clients that I work with, uh, I, I work probably about 85% of my, if not more, of my uh, private clients these days are medical referrals. They have some diagnosed condition, disease, uh, they have all kinds of labels, and most of them are probably being prescribed certain things. And yet when they come to me, like I said, the labels come off. Uh, I don't look at the person and put them in a category. I look at that person as a unique you know, person. And when they, when they walk in the door, all those labels come off. And as much as possible, I, I approach it as what is happening right now with you, right now in this moment. And in my office uh, training room, I have a clock that instead of numbers on it, it says now. It has the word now where a number would be. So it's always now. And that's the approach I take. What right now is your experience? Well, I'm always in pain. Well, right now, how much pain are you experiencing? And, you know, the person thinking about that they're always in pain is actually accelerating, enhancing, uh, manifesting that pain. And we don't think of it that way. And yet I happen to know that as soon as I can distract them or get their mind on something that is in another direction, the pain experience does change. 
And it's a matter of shaking up sometimes a person's belief systems so that they can begin to have at least a, an expectation that something can be changed. It's very empowering. When I talk about using hypnosis for any, anything, uh, whether it's weight loss or quitting smoking or nail biting, study habits, golf, playing better golf, it, it's really irrelevant what it is that we're working on. If it's a health issue, the, one of the very first things that I'm told is that the person is sleeping better. So one of the wonderful, nice side benefits, you know, we talk about the side effects of drugs, and as that article I was just reading says, the side, there are all, only side benefits from hypnosis. Simply by doing a hypnotic process, the mind and body go into the healing mode. The immune system instantly becomes stronger. The uh, brain literally, uh, once I started studying this, the science behind it, it turns out the brain releases certain chemicals that are the feel-good chemicals. And I won't go into all the long names for those because it's irrelevant. The bottom line is you can do that research on your own. And if I do a, a, one of the shows on that, we can get into more of the, the mechanics and the labels and the names that are put on these things. And yet, simply by doing the process, that relaxation response begins to work and the body begins to go into the healing mode, the relaxation mode, um, the digestion works better, the immune, immune system gets stronger, the muscles and all the parts of the body go into that balanced, uh, healthy state, the blood pressure kind of levels out, heart rate levels out. So whatever other things are going on in the body are going to be uh, helped and enhanced by the person doing the, the hypnosis. And again, the difference, and you can get that same relaxation response doing meditation. And you'll hear me say it often, why waste a good trance? Because it's really the same state, brainwave-wise, to go into a, a hypnotic state is, is the same brainwaves pretty much as when you're in meditation. And yet, to go ahead and use that state and let your creative unconscious mind be, be doing something extra for you. Um, Back in the 70s, uh, Dr. O. Carl Simonton uh, had done research on cancer. And the book called Getting Well Again uh, documents that research. He was a medical doctor who, who had a lot of credibility, so they, they had to publish the, the findings from his studies. And what happened was he got a bunch of people who were diagnosed with cancer and uh, you know given six months or less to live. And, and he would get them in a room, and he would have them go into a nice uh, light hypnotic state, a relaxation state, focusing the mind, calming the body, clearing away distractions. And then he would have them imagine Pac-Man going in and eating the cancerous tumors. And that was about the level of uh, the computers, back, computer games back then, Pac-Man. I think he had a comeback a few years ago. But that's about where they left me in computer games was with Pac-Man. I really love that. And they would imagine Pac-Man going in and in eating away, eliminating the cancerous tumors. Now, the, they do this, I, I don't remember, for how many minutes a day. And the results were extraordinary. People's tumors were shrinking, were completely being eliminated. They were being cured, all from imagining Pac-Man eating the tumors. Now, what's with that? We talk about a placebo effect. And when we talk about placebo, a lot of what makes the people who have a good effect with a placebo is an expectation. So when we talk about hypnosis being effective, the same thing applies. A positive expectation, a trust, a belief, or a trust that something can happen is usually all that really is required, just knowing that it's possible. That's why I like that word possibilities. If you open up a tiny window of possibility that, to anything, Regardless uh, what people around you are saying, regardless how many initials they have after their name and how much schooling and knowledge and whatever, they can be the best, the smartest in any area, and they still only know what they know up till now. And I always say in 5, 10, 20 years, we're going to know all new things. And what was unhealthy back 20 years ago, some things now are healthy and vice versa. So, you know, we're always changing and learning and growing and, and that's a good thing because change is good. It, it, the world's going to change. Your body's going to change. Your mind's going to keep changing regardless if you do something or not. Um, as long as that is the case, 
why don't you, why not just go ahead and assist those changes to be in a positive, in a healthy direction, a way that can actually enhance your life, enhance your health, improve your, your relationships, your financial situation. All of these things are a part of, of the way you're thinking, expecting, and, and the kinds of thought processes you're having. So, again, Bruce Lipton, the biology of belief, is what some of these things I'm talking about tonight are based on. Can you see that? Oh, on that side. I'm way over on the side here tonight. I'm under the up symbol. That's what counts. And I think I told you uh, that story on the first, um, in the first show that we did. This is show number three. And this is good for uh, CEUs if you write a paper on it. And you can call me about that or email me. And I want to talk a little bit more about that placebo effect. Columbia University did a lot of uh, research on the placebo effect along with uh, the University of Michigan. And they found that the placebo effect can relieve pain in humans. Huh. Now, see, that doesn't surprise me because, you know, some people will say, well, it's all in your mind. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, my point is, of course it is. It is all in your mind because there are also people who have been told that they were going to die of cancer in a year. There's a lot of documented situations on this uh, that you can read in different books and in research articles where people are told they're going to die. And then when they die, they find out that they were misdiagnosed, that they had something that was, was misdiagnosed and they should have lived another 10, 20 years. And this happens all the time in the medical industry. So ex expectation can work in both directions. If it can work one way, you know it can work another. When I used to give talks out in California before I moved to Florida, I would talk about, um, I would give talks to groups and I would, I would say, I'd be like nurses and some medical people, healthcare people in the group. And I'd say, how many of you think if you sat in a corner for a half hour every single day and meditated on making yourself sick, how many people think you can make yourself sick? And everybody's arm in the room went up and uh, absolutely they believed that you could do that. And then I'd say, okay, let's say you're already sick. You already have a condition. You're, you're, you have some discomfort, whatever it is, and you sit in a corner for a half hour every day and you meditate on making yourself well, on making yourself better. How many of you think you could do that? And far fewer hands would go up. And I would say, well, now, wait a minute here. If you can send it with your thoughts, with your mind in one direction, you most definitely have to agree that it can be sent in the other direction just as well. And that's what the placebo effect shows us that the mind can be sent in a direction to cause you to feel better. And if that's possible, and it is, why would you not want to learn how to do that? I'm always amazed when people just uh, are out there and, and really don't even search or look for. When, it, when I had a back injury at age 19, even, I was uh, stubborn enough, maybe is the word, but I was curious enough about, you know, what I was being told from the doctor. I just couldn't, couldn't believe was going to be true about my life. And there was a part of me that said, I don't, I don't think so. You know, there's something, there has to be a different way of, of thinking about this. I don't know where that thought came from, but I'm very thankful for it because I went and started doing some research, started studying on my own. And I ended up doing, uh, learning yoga because I, I started reading about yoga and how good it is for the back and the spine and longevity and all of that. And by the way, it's also good for going into that trance state that I call hypnosis, that some people call meditation, whatever focused relaxation. Again, I'm not concerned about the label on it, but it, it taught me how to, how to be more positive, how to be more up, how to think in a way that caused me to go in the other direction from the one that the doctor was sending me. <laughs> and that made me quite happy. And then, you know, I ended up doing many, many things that according to that doctor, I wasn't supposed to be able to do. And yet if, if another person walks into that same doctor with that same exact condition, that same exact back injury, and the doctor, with all of that credibility and all those degrees and whatever, tells the person, you know, that you're going to have all these problems for the rest of your life. You'll never be able to do whatever the list was he gave me. And, and it's going to possibly, you know, be involved with some uh, negative things like surgeries or whatever, whatever all the list was he was giving me. And another person may hear that and just take it in, allow it to become a part of their belief system, a part of their expectations. And that same person, if they started where I started when I was 19, at this point, I'm sure, is having a lot less quality of life than I have had. 
Um, I ended up going into show business. I became a dancer. I did a chorus line. I did all kinds of things that that doctor would have probably fallen down in shock or fainted if he if I ever told him that I was going to be be doing that. So there you go. Um, okay. So the placebo effect and the brain, the science behind it. Uh, again, the, uh, this is from Columbia University and uh, University of Michigan. Neurochemistry of the placebo effect can relieve pain in humans. The scientists found that the placebo effect caused the brain of test volunteers uh, to release more of a natural painkiller. The placebo effect is an improvement in a medical condition caused by a, a patient's belief as opposed to actual treatment. Exactly how the positive expectations created the placebo uh, translated into pain relief. And it, it's been a mystery up until now, they say. Understanding how placebo effects work uh, may give scientists insight into why many drugs have a range of effects on people. How drugs and other treatments work together with psychological states and how psychology can be effectively used in treatment. Uh, the research team was led by uh, Tor Wager, W-A-G-O-R, Columbia professor of psychology. Um, he says the placebo effects are often observed in clinical practice, but there have been relatively few uh, scientific studies that document the kinds of diseases that can be influenced by placebo treatment and how the treatment work, uh, the treatments work in the brain and the body. And he said, uh, yet the placebo groups are included in virtually every major clinical trial, which is a, a testament to their importance. Only in the past few years have scientists developed uh, the tools to directly investigate how placebo works in the human brain. So when people say it's all in your mind, I say, oh, yes, you've discovered that, have you? <laughs> so because to me, it, it is all happening in the mind. You know, when you use a biofeedback instrument or machine, and I did some training in EEG biofeedback because I wanted to see what is going on with this and the brain waves and all that. It was quite, I was quite fascinated. I still am. I'm a lifetime student of all of this, and I find it all fascinating. I think we've all only begun to tap into the unlimited abilities of the mind. And yet there's so much available that most people out there aren't even aware of that it, it's, it's, pretty interesting in that way as well. So the, the biofeedback machine is a representation of what's happening in the brain. Now you can manipulate brain waves with some of these machines through the different things that they do in playing games and that kind of thing. And we had some pretty interesting experiences during my training on that. We had people that were getting migraine headaches that had never had them before. So I began to wonder what, you know, do we really want to play with artificially manipulating those brain waves, which is kind of, if you think about it, you put a foreign substance called a drug into the body, something the body isn't used to having in there, and the brain waves start to respond to that. And the brain, the mind, and, and then the, the reactions to that start to become part of your uh, emotional state. You start to create expectations and thoughts and attitudes surrounding that, and yet it's totally artificial. So to me, it just makes so much more sense to rely when possible, when it's possible, on the unconscious mind and the brain, the great chemicals in the brain that are far more powerful than anything man created. I had a doctor tell me that one time that was coming to me. Uh, I think he was coming for, well, something else for weight loss or something. But he came to me and he, he announced to me, he said, you know, the brain has chemicals for pain relief that are 10,000 times stronger than the, than the strongest pain reliever that man has ever created. And that makes sense. So if all of those chemicals are available in the brain, the mind runs the body using certain thoughts by putting the thoughts on, on the right uh, focus, by focusing on the right thoughts, the right kinds of thinking. Again, we teach people how to think in ways that produce the, the wanted result. You can train the body to release those chemicals which is why the, the Pac-Man was able to uh, get rid of the, the cancerous tumors. It wasn't Pac-Man, obviously, inside of the person's body, but by making that internal representation and having that intention, the mind and the body got together and released certain chemicals and hormones and whatever it was that, that had to be done in the cells to go ahead and, and do what needed to be done to reach the result that was being focused on. 
So again, we're talking about the scientific side of hypnosis based on uh, some of which is based on Bruce Lipton's work. And uh, I have his book here, The Biology of Belief. It's available out there. He has another book out. I can't remember the name of it right now, but this is the one that uh, he talked about these concepts uh, back before he wrote this book. This is what he was talking about when I first started studying hypnosis 21 almost years ago. So uh, let's see here. The scientists uh, discovered, oh, here we go. Um, uh, in the experiments that I was talking about from Columbia University and, and the University of, of Michigan, scientists applied a, a placebo cream to the volunteers' forearms. The volunteers were told it was a pain reliever, though the cream was not. Next, a control cream was applied to a nearby area, and the subjects were told it had no effect. Researchers then placed a painfully hot stimulus, uh, similar to a very hot cup of coffee, to both forearms and, and used positron emission tomography, PET, scans, to measure and compare the brain activity during each application. They found that the placebo treatment caused the pain, the, uh, the brain, excuse me, caused the brain to release more opioids, opioid, opioids, <laughs> good word, hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, a chemical produced by the body and released by the brain to relieve pain. So there you go, those opioids, we like those. The, t- the scientists discovered that in the first uh, area treated with a placebo, which volunteers falsely believed to have been treated with a pain reliever, opioid release occurred in brain areas associated with p- pain relief in particular. Uh, and then they're talking about the uh, no, different areas of the brain uh, in the area of the brain stem uh, used in neurosurgi- neurosurgical interventions to control chronic pain. They also found opioid release in uh, another part of the brain, the anterior uh, cingulate parts of the cerebral cortex, thought to be related to evaluating and orchestrating responses in the brain and body to deal with pain. So that's from research uh, demonstrates how placebo effect works in the brain. Uh, you can find that at uh, physorg.com. That's from July of 2007. And uh, these results uh, extend our knowledge of how beliefs and expectations affect the brain's neurochemistry and show that one's mental response to a challenge can affect the brain and body in ways that are relevant to health. And Wagner explained that understanding these interactions can pave the way for, the, for new treatments. You're informed of knowledge of how mind-body interactions now, I uh, had written some things years ago when I first started studying this, uh, this field of hypnosis and NLP and some of these things uh, officially. And um, I started, uh, I came up with a term called mind body cohesion about the cohesive nature of the mind body experience. And I'm going to have that as a topic probably for our next meeting. And I'm going to be possibly bringing in one of my former clients to talk about some of the changes that have happened, some of the manifestations that that have occurred in their life uh, based on doing this work. Uh, Because the fun thing about what I do is, you know, they come in with their diagnosis or their condition or their problem. And instantly, like I said, the labels come off and we go, what is your what are you experiencing right now? What what is it that's happening? And taking all of the, what I call the color off of it, the opinion, taking the, uh, you know, the, the judgment as much as possible off of the thing that is happening. Because those are the things that weigh it down and that send it in the negative direction. So instead of a problem, we talk about what is the current challenge? Instead of pain and having a pain uh, scale, like doctors, they always say, what is on a scale of one to 10, how, what is your pain level? As soon as they come to me, once we've talked about what's going on, it becomes a comfort scale because it puts the focus, the mind, on comfort. We move in the direction of our most dominant thought is a phrase that's been around forever. It started way back, I think, with Plato or one of those guys back in <laughs> centuries ago, and it's been repeated in different ways. But whatever your dominant thought is throughout the day is where you're sending that thought energy, that mind that runs the brain and runs the body is sending all of the chemicals in your body mind 
in that direction. So if you're focused on pain, they've done studies in hospitals that when the doctor or nurse walks in and says the word pain, just upon hearing the word, the experience of pain instantly increases. And to the contrary, if you walk in and say the word comfort, if you're focusing on comfort, relaxation, peace, tranquility, those kinds of things instantly send the chemicals in the brain down into the body to create some of those sensations. So why would you, why would you not use that? It, it works just as efficiently. I, t- I tell people it's just as efficient to send the chemicals that are available in a positive direction of feeling good, feeling better, being more productive, being uh, performing better in any area of your life or your, or your um, sport or whatever it is, your work. And it just takes just as much energy for the mind. The mind's going to send it in one direction or the other. So the goal can be set by the conscious mind. You can start to become aware of the, the usage of words, the linguistics of it, which I believe NLP and Neuro Linguistic Programming is one of the best things for someone to study to learn the, the way to use language. And we talk to ourselves all the time. So when you hear someone talk out loud out of their mouth, they're, they're usually speaking in the same types of frames, we call it, as what they're speaking in their own mind. So if the way they're speaking is in a positive direction, then their self-talk probably is going in that direction as well. And yet it's, it's habits of thinking and speaking that are reinforcing whatever direction that person is going. So if it's a negative habit uh, that has been learned already, all learning occurs at the unconscious level, and that means that the unconscious, we're not aware of it. That means we're, we're unaware. That's by definition. What we are conscious of, we can decide to make some change about. We can do something about. But if we're not even aware that it's there, (laughs) then that's the first step. The first step is awareness. So when I work with people with these kinds of techniques, I say, you know, we can't just, you know, zap you into a hypnotic state, do the work, and then send you out and everything's fine because you can tend to pollute or change back or erase or you know, eliminate any of the work that's been done by the repetition and by going back to your old negative thinking. So it is habits of thinking, and, and it, some, some things take a little bit longer to reprogram. If you think of it like a computer, you can override some programs completely and, and quickly, and other things take longer. I've seen people get rid of quite severe medical conditions so fast that it made the doctor's head spin. I had one lady come back a couple of years ago. I remember she came in and said, my doctor is flabbergasted because her, cause her recovery, her cure, her cure was so quick. And it, and it surprised me as well because it was a little beyond even what I had seen. And I remember those words, though, and I said, well, one of my favorite thing, things at that point came to flabbergast doctors. I love working with doctors, and I also love introducing them to how they can enhance and augment and and accelerate sometimes uh, the, the things that they're doing. Like we talk about the placebo effect. When a drug is truly needed, how nice would it be if the belief and the expectation surrounding that medication would, would enhance and accelerate the healing process or, or getting to the point where, where the person is back in balance? Because uh, most drugs are meant to be short-term. Uh, some of them, I believe, now are being used a lot longer than they were originally designed to be. And part of that is, again, the expectation and, and the body chemistry that changes when someone is, in, is on a drug for a while. And at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, jumping in my own head saying, let's make it clear what I do. I am a hypnotherapist. I'm, I do hypnosis, NLP, and, and a lot of other techniques. I am not a medical doctor, nor do I give advice or, or prescriptions or diagnoses or any of those things. So please, uh, I wanted to make that real clear. Um, I work under doctor's referrals because the doctor is the one that diagnoses and, and has, you know, the, the training and the license to be able to do that. And then usually by the time they come to me, they're coming to me as, as a complementary or an inter- integrated type of adjunct therapy. I like those words much better than alternative. Uh, kind of the word alternative implies instead of, and I never, ever, ever want to work instead of a medical doctor when that is required or, or a mental health person. I work with them often. I teach them. I teach classes for doctors and mental health people, and and I always make it clear. uh, I don't, nor do I want to uh, diagnose or prescribe or treat any condition. When the person has already uh, something that they are being treated for by a licensed person, they send them to me, and I'm, I'm able to help them to integrate 
the mental side. I can spend an hour and a half, two hours, sometimes longer. I think I did a session the other day. I broke my own record. I think it was almost a three-hour session. I don't time my sessions. I don't look at my watch. I go into the session, the state, with the person. And my goal is let's see how far we can get right now. What is your mind ready for? What is it? What is it? Where can we go? How much can we do? And I have that luxury. I, I plan to keep that luxury. I, that's one reason I like uh, the field that I'm in, because I can spend as much time as is right for that person on that day. And by the, I don't know how to explain, but at some point I just get the sense they're saturated, they're finished for now. And by the way, the mind continues processing the information just like it does anyway. And then I teach people at, on a conscious beta level of mind, I teach them as they're out busy in the world and, and dealing with whatever their challenges are, that they have certain times of the day and certain things they can do before they go to sleep, before they pass through that hypnotic brainwave state, which you pass through to go to sleep. And they, they can use different times of the day and those times right before sleep and right after waking up to enhance what, what has been opened up, what has been started in the session. So uh, just as in my uh, sessions with clients, I have no idea how long I've been talking. So I always count on good old Adam over there. He's going to let me know when I'm running out of time. So again, this is Think Up, Unlimited Possibilities. That truly is the way I feel. I feel the, the exploration of the unlimited mind is the new frontier. Um, not that it's a new area, but it's, I believe this is where the answers are. It's, it's where all of the answers are for humanity, for, for the world, for everything that anyone can possibly be searching for. And there's so much available there, and we're just beginning to tap into it. Uh, my name is Patricia Scott. This is Think Up Unlimited Possibilities. And you can find us on talkwad.com under the empowerment section. 7.30 to 8.30 on Thursdays is the live show. You can call in at 727-493-2055. And I'll be happy, more than happy to answer your questions if I am able to the best of my ability at this point in my evolution. And uh, to continue, uh, if you'd like to attend anything that anything else I'm doing, you can go to uphypnosis.com. Up, like look up in the air. Look up, think up, be up, feel up. My license plate says think up. It's just kind of my mantra because every time I think about that up, it causes me to remember that there are possibilities. It opens up my energy. It opens up that, that focus and allows me to see more possibilities. And that's the way I intend to always live my life. And hopefully I can help others learn to see more possibilities in their lives as well. So we've been talking about the placebo effect. I want to remind you, uh, uphypnosis.com is my website. If you email me through the website at info at uphypnosis.com or uh, uphypnosis at yahoo.com is another way to get me. I am more than happy to send you the one page little article that I wrote. And uh, you can watch some of the other archive shows. And there's something free on each if you mention each show. Also, if you're a hypnotist, you can get continuing education unit, uh, units for listening to this show and then writing a paper, and I can give you more information about that. Uh, continuing education classes, uh, we do master classes for hypnotists, and we invite the public to come and be practice clients, and uh, that's a lot of fun. Usually the last Wednesday of the month, you can find those on uphypnosis.com. The next one is uh, the 30th, I believe, is a Wednesday, hopefully. I think that's the date. Uh, the last Wednesday in January. And since it's January, I always do something about starting over, you know, kind of getting started for, this one's called New Beginnings. And I have a script that I wrote that is part of that class. I usually bring in two or three scripts by myself and other people that I have permission to use. And um, we practice. Usually you get to be hypnotized two or three times during that class. It's great practice because like anything else, to do this well, you want to practice. I teach a self-hypnosis class the last Saturday of each month, and that one is this coming Saturday. And it's a three-hour class on Saturday where, where I teach people how to do self-hypnosis because, as I mentioned in uh, previous shows, it is all self-hypnosis. We are constantly hypnotizing ourselves. If you don't like that idea, I'm sorry to tell you <laughs> that you're doing it. You've been doing it all your life. You do it through what you say to yourself inside of your head all day long. And um, it's, it's the constant self-talk, the way you think about things. If you're thinking in possibilities, and I can, and I know, I know this is possible, and, and I'm doing this, and those kind of things. Like Yoda said, 
You know, there is no try. There is only do or do not. And the way that you're talking to yourself out, out your mouth to people and in your head to yourself, uh, you want that to match up to your goals, your intentions, your positive possibilities. And trust me when I say that if you, uh, if you have a goal, if you have an intention, something you desire in your life, and you're shooting for the moon, what your unconscious mind knows you're capable of is probably way beyond the stars. Because the unconscious mind knows everything about you, knows all of your untapped talents and possibilities and, you know, all the different things inside of you that are just waiting to be expressed. You know, there's so many stories about people that are, you know, they retire from their lifelong job and, you know, they're in their 70s or 80s. And all of a sudden they take up painting or they take up something else. And all of a sudden here they are famous for something that they didn't even realize they had a talent for until something tapped into it. So that talent was there all along. It just hadn't been uh, expressed. It hadn't had a, had a reason to come out and, and show itself. So trust me when I tell you that the, I see miracles in this field all the time, and I love to watch people. I love to witness people surprising themselves. So when you have a goal, if you have something you're passionate about, something you want to uh, desire, something you want to achieve, it doesn't matter if everyone around you thinks you're a little crazy because when I was a kid, I wanted to become a singer. I, I told everybody I'm going to be a singer when I grow up and everybody just, yeah, yeah, whatever. And, you know, I just, it was there so solidly that by the time I grew up, it didn't matter how many obstacles or how many challenges got in the way of that. It was an absolute. It was there. I knew. And you know when something is possible for yourself, when no one else is listening. I always say when you're, when you're all by yourself and it's quiet. So listen to that voice inside of you, that higher intelligence, that, that inner uh, knowing voice that comes in from time to time and gives you advice. You want to listen to that. Um, so I know I'm running out of time here. So the next time we come together, uh, like I said, I may have one of my clients to come in and talk, uh, to tell their story. And for the rest of this session, I just want to remind you, this is a uh, talk wad network. You can go to talkwad.com and they've got some great shows all over there. I'm under the empowerment section and this is think up unlimited possibilities. And I hope you will begin to uh, explore the amazing, your amazing unlimited mind. That's what I call myself, hypnosis class that's coming up this Saturday. And it's very uh, fun to tap into and surprise yourself when you start realizing there's so much more inside of you. And I have a theory that, you know, if we're given gifts, I think we're expected to use them. I think we're expected to share them to express ourselves in any and every way possible. And that's my goal in life. Hopefully 20 years from now, I'll be doing even more possibilities uh, based on all of the, all of the experiences and, and what I've done up to this point. And I know that my, my knowing of the mind will always lead me in ways where I'm studying how the mind works. It's just such a phenomenal field. And so I think I'm running out of time here. And I hope you will join me next week, next Thursday, 7.30 to 8.30 on TalkWad.com, TalkWad Network. So go forth, think up, feel up, be up. Think about that all the time. And I will see you again next week. This is Patricia Scott.